SMD Law is the official law firm of the Spartan Nation. Check them out on the interwebs at smdalaw.com or at 866-529-3537. No matter where you are in the state of Michigan, Upper Peninsula, Lower Peninsula, it doesn't matter. They have an office near you. So whether you need to send a letter to an annoying neighbor, or you're a criminal and you need defense, maybe you just have problems with elder law. Check them out, smdalaw.com today. The official law firm of the Spartan Nation. Call them first, then you act. Good evening, everybody. Welcome back, Spartan Nation. As always, we bring in the one, the only, the iconic wonder himself, the great one, Matt Holadic from thespun.com. Matt, how are you, bud? Doing great. Always a pleasure to be on with you guys. Well, it's always good to be on with you. Everyone wants to know how wedding plans coming. They are coming along pretty well. We got the date, we got the venue. Next step is looking at the food and, and some of the other you know, arrangements. But they are coming along pretty well. We're 13 months to the day, August 29th, 2020. So 13 months to the day. Awesome. All right, Matt, we got a lot to talk about. Let's obviously start. Um, what do you think of Miami Dolphins already firing a new assistant coach? I mean, the guy's new. Yeah, Pat Flaherty, longtime NFL assistant, he's been the, uh, been the Dolphins offensive line coach for all of five months. And, you know, they just obviously started training camp. But this is something that reportedly has been brewing since the spring. Uh, Ian Rappaport of NFL Network said that they've had some issues down there with his ability to implement the new system. And I guess you know, teaching and convey what the head coach Brian Flores wants. Uh, it's really, really rare to see this happen. Uh, almost unheard of. Uh, not a great sign for the Dolphins, although they did uh, replace him with Dave DiGuglielmo, who's a longtime NFL assistant as well. But certainly a rare uh, occurrence. And especially not a great one for a team that's projected to be one of the worst teams in the league this year. Matt, did I not tell you last year before the season, I mean last year after the season, that I expected Miami to tank this year to get to a? You did say that, and I think uh, um, I think that that plan is going pretty well so far. All right. What do you think of this one? Alabama, Wisconsin announced a home and home. I love it. I love it too. Uh, 2024, 2025. First game is uh, going to be in Madison. Second one's in Tuscaloosa. Alabama has gotten a lot of criticism, and rightfully so, for recently for not having a great non conference schedule, not playing these home and home. Uh, but I will give them credit that they've gone out of their way now to kind of schedule a bunch of these games and to, you know, to, to, to increase the uh, difficult, the uh, difficultness uh, didn't come out right, but it increased how tough their their future schedules are. They've got Notre Dame on the schedule. They've got Oklahoma. They've got Texas, West Virginia, now Wisconsin. I think it's great. I also think it's awesome to see you know the Big Ten team testing itself against the, the top program in the country. All right, now I want to switch to some predictions that are coming out of uh, around the country. Let's start in the Pac-12 West, where Ryan Leaf of ESPN predicts Washington to win it. I agree with him. What are your thoughts coming out of the Pac-12 West? Um, excuse me, I the Pac-12 North. Pac-12 North, I'm sorry. I think that's a fine, fine pick. I think it's going to come down to Washington and Oregon, most likely. Uh, Oregon, uh, Stanford and Washington State will be in, involved in the mix. Uh, I'm a little surprised Ryan Leaf has Cal 84. He has them right there, too. But I have no problem with the Washington prediction. I think Chris Peterson has earned the benefit of the doubt to have his team still have expectations, even though they have a new starting quarterback, new starting running back, and I think nine new starters on defense. Uh, I'm fine with that, that Washington pick. What about coming out of the South? He picks Utah and Arizona State. Who do you think? I think Utah comes out of the South, and I think on paper Utah looks like the clear favorite in the South. I had them ranked pretty high in uh, my preseason top 25. I think they might have the best defensive line uh, rotation in the country. It's certainly up near the top. Uh, Kyle Whittingham is one of the most underrated coaches in the country. He's Mr. Consistent out there at Utah. And unless a, a team really surprises other than Utah, I can't see the team being challenged this year. In their division. 
And who do you predict to win the Pac-12? He predicts Washington. So do I. I think I think I had Oregon as the highest ranked Pac-12 team in my top 25. But going so go by going off his prediction of UW and Utah, I will take UW to win that game. You walk through Gotham. You walk through New York City. It's the bald head. It's the shirt open with the hair on his chest spell in my place with the big medallion. The Italian stallion, the grand poobah of the spun.com, Matt Hiletic. Matt, let's now turn to the SEC. He's got Alabama in first place, LSU in second, and the SEC West. I don't agree with that order. I think A&M is going to sneak up, and I think they're going to tie LSU. Um, I think they're – but uh, m your thoughts, it doesn't matter. I think Alabama wins it. Your thoughts? I think Alabama wins the West, no doubt. I, I'm high on A&M. I do think, and I remember citing this in, in my top 25, they have a really, really rugged schedule this year. Um, not only do they have to play Clemson again, they obviously have to play Alabama and LSU and, and Auburn and Mississippi State all in the division. Um, it's not an easy schedule, but I, I could see A&M sneaking up to that two spot, but I don't think it really matters because I think Alabama comes out of the West with no problem. And out of the East, he's got Florida and Georgia. Um at 11 and 1 in the East, but Florida gets the nod because he says they'll beat Georgia. Your your call. That's that's a very very gutty prediction from Ryan Leaf, and I actually like that he went a little bit outside the box because everyone's taking Georgia it seems to come out of the East, myself included. I'm going with Georgia as the number three team in the country, um, but I, I I do have Florida as a top ten team, and I like the fact that he's thinking a bit outside the box, having the Gators win the East. I just if I have to predict, I think Georgia wins it again. No, I don't think it happens. All right. Then he's got Alabama winning the SEC. I don't think you and I argue with that at all. Not at all. Big 12. I mean, the Big 10, excuse me. He's got Ohio State at 12-0, and Michigan at 10-2. and I disagree with this, um, but your thoughts who about the Big 10 East? No problem with you know, Ohio State winning the – the Big Ten East. I agree. Oh, no, might be a little tough, but I have no problem with that prediction. Um, the, the interesting one here, he has Penn State at 56, and I remember we spoke when, when we talked about our top 25, that uh, Penn State, I had them ahead of Michigan State by a couple spots and ranked in the top 20, but uh, they could fall fall off. So uh, Ryan Leaf is, is seeing the same thing there. He's feeling a, a drop for the mini Lions. Um, but I have no problem with Ohio State at one. I think Michigan, Michigan State will fight it out for that second spot, or one of them could potentially win the division. Um, and but I think the real news, the real interesting thing here is what he has in the West. Yeah, I it's agree. Now I agree with him. I do think six teams are going to make it out of the West into bowl games. He's got Minnesota 1, Nebraska 2. That stuns me. Your thoughts? I think you can make a case for all, almost any team, at least five of the teams in the West, winning the division if things break right. I, Illinois, no, and probably the do need too much to happen. But you can make a case for Minnesota, Nebraska, Wisconsin, Iowa, and even the Northwestern again in the West. Uh, he is on the Minnesota train. I had Nebraska and Iowa right ne next to each other in the top 25, and Wisconsin just outside of it, so right there. I think that's going to be a really hot, hotly contested division. I'm going to you know, stick with stick with my guns. I'm picking Nebraska to win that division, but I, I, it wouldn't stun me if they, if they don't because a lot of people are on them a little bit too hot this year. I think they'd be a little bit uh, overrating what they'll be in year two on the Scott Frost. I agree with you. And then he's got Ohio State winning the Big Ten title. If, if it's Ohio State, Minnesota, I don't even think it's up for an argument. No, I have no problem with Ohio State winning it. And I think especially if they play Minnesota in the title game, I think they will definitely they will win that matchup. I agree. His name is the one and the only, the iconic wonder. The great Matt Halatic. Matt, the AP announced when they're releasing their preseason top 25. When do we get it? That's how you know things that are, are, things are getting real. And it'll be a little bit earlier 
than normal this season. It will be released at noon, August the 19th, which is in a couple of Mondays, so uh, three weeks, basically. Uh, the reason it's a little earlier this year is because that's early opening night on the 24th with Miami and Florida, and I believe Hawaii is a game, too. So uh, three weeks, we'll have the AP Top 25, and that's when you know if things are, are really – the countdown to the season is – in the final stages, and we're getting ready for, you know, a new college Tate Martell, the Miami starting quarterback. Well, there's a competition. Who's the quarterback? Tate Martell has been making a lot of highlights this, uh, a lot of headlines, I should say, this offseason. Um, probably for who his girlfriend is. I think we've written about that more than the actual quarterback competition in Miami. But as for the quarterback competition, you know, for, they have not named the starter yet. It's him and um, Nicole, uh, Nicole Perry and Jaron Williams. And, you know, right now there's no starter named. But Manny Diaz has said that Martell is ahead of the other two as of today, which is a good start. I think that eventually, if I had to predict, I think that's what was going to happen. And I think it's a good sign for Martell that, you know, at the end of July – he is technically number one on the depth chart. I totally got formally number one. I agree. He's a great Matt addict from the sponge. He's a great Matt addict from the sponge.